This is the last prototype lock that I got from Tobias and Julian. Remember those two carpenters in Germany? They also make handmade locks. This one is very unusual. Take a look at this keyway. Uh, again, all of this is handmade. It's built, of course, on a BKS uh, shell, but everything internally Tobias and Julian put together. Take a look at this. Now, I've seen a lock kind of like this several years ago. It came from Korea. There was no way to tension it, so uh, I had to figure out a way. And so I tried the same techniques on this one. The technique I used on the, on the Korean lock is I just got a piece of windshield wiper insert, and then I was able to slide it in, and you see the first pin in there? I was able to push it against the first pin and then pick. It was, that was a five-pin lock. This, by the way, is a six-pinner. And I had no love at all, nothing. I was not able to detect anything. So then I turned the tensioner around, and then I kind of felt around the back, thinking maybe there's got to be a groove or something back there that I can fit it into. Nothing. It's perfectly smooth in the back. Feels like I'm brushing against that plate. There's just nothing to put that tensioner inside of. So then I got to thinking about why that might be. And I figured that my tensioner was pinching that first pin, which is what it was designed to do, but it was pinching it to such a degree that it was skewing the feel, if there was any, from all the other five pins. So I made another tool, and that would be this one, a little brass rod. And I slid him in there. I tried this both clockwise and counterclockwise. And the idea being that I can spread the pressure against all six pins. So instead of all focused on that first pin, that pressure was going to be spread among all six of them. And then I'd be able to pick it. And also the, the tensioner would act as a guide for my pick. Hours and hours and hours trying to pick it both clockwise and counterclockwise. I got nothing. So I'm throwing in the towel. The only thing in the box from Tobias and Julian that I can use successfully will be this beater block. I've been beating myself in the head with it. I've already got it dented up, just an equal size dents in my head. So I figured I'm throwing in the towel on this too. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what we got inside of here. I do have a T-wrench. You know, you guys, so many of you guys complained about me using, oh, by the way, let's take a look at the key. That's the other exciting part. Check out this key, also handmade. Unbelievable. There's a groove cut in the tip of it, and that's what goes in lined up with the pins. So it slides in, and then you got to turn it a little bit, and it goes in the rest of the way. And then it turns perfectly. Now, getting it out is a little trickier. You have to align it just right, and it's somewhere right in there, and then it slides out perfectly. If it's anywhere else, of course, you can't pull this out. So alignment is a little bit of an issue. But for me, picking is the biggest issue. So let's take a look and see what we got inside of here. I've got, I'm going to use my beautiful walnut pinning tray. And let's start pulling this baby apart. Pull up pin one first, the one that has given me all the trouble. All right, we got a spring. Need that beater block. Probably ought to pull them over here, and I can use the side to catch the pin. All right, so I'm already starting to see why. <laughs> Check it out. So we have a basically a T-pin, and I imagine they're all going to be shaped like this to prevent them from falling down inside of the keyway, so he had to do that. So just think of this one as a standard pin, but I can already see why I was having so much trouble. It looks like ASA pin. Great. I'm starting already after the first pin. I'm not feeling bad at all. Awful deep. They're threaded in there pretty deep. All right. See what we got again. Okay. We have, I don't see the key pin coming out. There he is. Okay. Again, we have the same kind of thing. We have what, I thought it was a T-pin, but now it's actually probably standard for all of the key pins. And then we have a large spool. And of course, a different spring. All right, pin three. 
Uh, different spring already, I can see that. He's a little longer. Oops, wrong. Let's see what I do with tweezers. He goes right there. And come out of there, you devil. He doesn't want to come out. There he is. Uh-huh. I don't feel bad at all, guys. Okay, standard key pin, just like the others. And then we have this guy. Man, I probably couldn't have got this open if it was a three pin lock. Pin four. There we go. Oh, there's a lot of stuff in here. Okay, so this is a multi-pin, multi-piece lock, or multi-piece pin. Let's see if I can grab him and get him on here. So, this is what we're looking at. And you notice this has a little piece that comes off and slides in and out. You guys are killing me. I need to take up golf. Maybe I can beat myself to death in that sport instead of this one. All right, five. Different spring. These guys are really tight in there. Do not want to come out. Get another ass up in. And that key pin is probably stuck up in there. Man, I may have to push the key in there to get him out. All right, ass a pin. There's your spring, and see if I can lure that key pin out. Nope. Nope. He doesn't want to go in there. Man, I don't know what to tell you. He is not coming out of there. All right, let's take out number six, and we'll worry about the key pin for five. When we get the lock apart. Okay, different spring. This is a copper spring. Okay, these guys are not cooperating at all. Okay, here we go. And that's the last of them. Okay, we have two identical key pins. All the key pins are identical. And we had another one of these weird looking guys like that and then a copper spring what a nasty nasty concoction I'm gonna pull this apart so when we take a picture you guys will know that this was a multi-part pin alright guys I don't know how far down these are threaded I'm not gonna take the thing completely apart because I don't have the uh, the washers to put back on there to put it back together but I'm guessing we've probably got some threads in here as well. I know they go deep in these six chambers, but I can't tell how far down they do go. This is what we're looking at. It has unusual shaped key pins, but they do not come into the picking. Remember, you got to prevent those pins from falling all the way through the lock. So I'm sure they had to counter mill each of the chambers to that depth that you see there. So those are normal pins. The upper pins, we had a couple of assas. We had one on chamber one, and then we had one on chamber five. We had a spool here. We had a multi-part pin here. And then we had two of these weird looking angled guys that I'm sure are designed to grab some threads that are in those chambers. So I'm taking up golf. I'm giving up lock picking right now. Tobias and Julian, because of you guys, thank you very much. I'm going to look forward to learning a new hobby. Anyway, fellas, <laughs> thanks for your time. Stay safe, stay legal. Tobias and Julian, truly, thank you for this magnificent lock. This is truly amazing work. Don't send me any more. I can't get them, guys. I give up. Thanks, guys. <laughs>